fucking Conan. That, no shit. No he doesn't shit. magic. He doesn't give a fuck. He hates magic. Just he will drive, drive his enemies from the field and hear the lamentation of their women, <laughs> but he will not mess around with a wand. I Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> with a wand? Wow. Man, that would be a sad thing to see. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Wednesday Night Gentlemen Multimedia Empire official podcast. We are rolling right into episode number 36. This is a show where we like to talk about comic books, movies, TV shows, video games, and everyone's favorite, political discourse. I'm your host, Tactic Angel, and with me is Midget Radio, my murderous socialist friend. Hello. How are you, Midget Radio? Doing great, Tactic Angel. How are you? I am doing well. Got a little uh, jingly in my my glass. Yep. So today uh, I'm trying out uh, Angel's Envy Ooh, because it that? was on. It, it's a, a bourbon. Okay. And it is was on sale for what I believe is an error at the local Kroger. Oh. You're like, nice. wow, that's solidly $12 less expensive than if I bought it anywhere else. <laughs> nice. Because <laughs> it's, it's usually uh, right around 50 Sometimes you'll see it for 60 Wow, and damn. I think they had it really? marked down to like $32. And you're like, that is a mistake. Wow. That was, that was a wrong. <laughs> Somebody so- made a wrong. So is it worth 50 or is it worth 32? Uh, it's definitely worth 32 for okay. sure. Um, you know, if I was going to if I was going to spend $50, I'd probably be back in in Centauri Toki over this. Um, yeah. but but as far as like a, a good American whiskey goes, I I like this. It has a warmth and and none of the harsh aftertastes really? that you can get with uh with some uh whiskey yeah 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 it's cool. very it's very good and you can see through the bottle and there are angel wings on the back it's just like <laughs> oh my gosh wow yeah yeah that's, that's important great. man no that's solid product design that's that's fantastic yeah and and plus i felt like needed to mix it up yeah so, yeah yeah well you're the one typically bringing uh, the variety to this show in terms of uh, drinking. So booze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that it. note, I am back on the set Suntory. So Suntory. Yeah. It is a I solid, get it. solid it's whiskey. It's so good. It really is. It really is. I like it a lot. It makes for a good podcast. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how, how that goes today. Uh, today we'll be talking about two different things. First, Stranger Things, season two, we'll be talking about the first couple of episodes, our first impressions, and then we'll probably have to watch the rest of it at some point. And then uh, a little bit after that, we will be talking about the Orville again. This time, I think we'll be talking about mostly uh, episode seven entitled Majority Rule. I hope so. Yeah. All right. So. First things first, Stranger Things. Set in the early 80s, Stranger Things told us the tale of a group of kids, one of whom was speared away to an other world called the Upside Down. His mother, played by Winona Ryder, who I am still into, (laughs) loses her mind a little while she's trying to find her son, get him back, and against all odds, uh, eventually that kind of works out. That might have been a spoiler. If you haven't seen season one, whatever. Here it, we works go. Like, well, it works likewise, out. It works out in the end. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, this isn't Twin Peaks. <laughs> That's true. There's like a resolution and yeah. <laughs> uh, likewise, his friends never give up on him, uh, especially when they befriend a strange young girl they call L, uh, short for 11 or something. Anyway, Midget Radio, first three episodes, first impressions of Stranger Things, uh, season two. Season one was pretty pretty good, pretty darn good. And I think 
like I was particularly worried about what in the hell they were going to do with uh, season two. Yeah. How are they doing? Uh, yeah, I had the uh, same concerns. I uh, was really into season one um, and was somewhat concerned that like season two might lean into kind of some of the cheaper things that made the first season so endearing, mostly the nostalgia stuff. Um, you know, hey, remember arcades, remember Ghostbusters, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and so far, I got to say, with the first three episodes of season two, I'm surprised, like, I'm I, I'm way into it. I got right back into it. Um, I found the stories pretty much immediately engaging. Um, I forgot how much I kind of liked these characters, not just the kids, um, but even uh, what I can't, I don't know anybody's name. Um, but our main character's sister, um, and her boyfriend, who was kind of a douchebag in the first season, and he's a little bit more likable. Yeah, this time. he's he's rounded out a little bit more toward the end of season one, and 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 this time around in season two, I'm you know I I, I totally dig him. Um, so yeah, these first three episodes, it's certainly taken some. There's been some bizarre <laughs> choices, uh, just some bizarre stuff, but not. But overall, I've been super engaged with it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of get one of my questions out of the way. And, and that I ask it is of course, always a hint that, that I do kind of feel <laughs> this way a little bit, but I felt particularly with the, the first episode or maybe even two episodes that they were leaning pretty heavily into, do you remember the eighties? Yes. Yeah. And, and I was like, I I do, <laughs> but for the love of God, please don't make this what season two is about. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can, I, I totally see that. And I expect it being, you know, a, a sequel. You're going to see more of some of that. I mean, you're going to see more, more of the nostalgia. Um, and the, it, it's a, it's a cliched sequel in, in that sense that, that that's certainly an element and that the, the, the looming threat, you know, is, is much bigger and more catastrophic than it was. Uh, so it's all bigger and heavier, um, as a sequel typically is despite that though, I mean, despite, despite those aspects, um, I still think at least in the first three episodes, the show manages to rise above, um, some of that shallower stuff um and is still telling a, an engaging story on its own mm -hmm. well i'll say this uh the way that you were talking about it with like you forgot how much you liked these characters and and like my first impression was i get it it's the 80s you can we can do a little bit less of the loud music over <laughs> people driving cars yeah <laughs> Like, just turn it back. We yeah. don't need it to be at 11 the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but then you go, you get right into it. And like, I, and they do it with the Ghostbusters thing too, which I thought was a little <laughs> yeah. bit gratuitous. But, yeah. Um, but I, I mean, like the kids are so fun. They really like, are. <laughs> uh Dustin and and Mike who yeah who you're thinking right. I think Dustin, Dustin is yeah. Dustin is kind of the star. <laughs> <He's> he, the... <laughs> I I hope that his actor uh, has realistic expectations about his longevity <laughs> as, as an actor and and doesn't end up kind of strung out Corey Feldman style or. Or whatever. You know what he I, might end up being though is like a Sean Astin. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's totally possible. Yeah, you hey, know, remember me in the Goonies? I'm pretty good in some of this other stuff too. You know what? Yeah, you are. You really are. Like, <laughs> yeah, he could be. It's a respectable he could be. career. <laughs> and and there there are other people who you know you think about it. You're like, man, the chances of Will Wheaton becoming a, <laughs> a drug addled 30 year old right are, was really high but he's you know i don't know about the drug addled he seems to be doing pretty well for himself yeah, yeah. See, and, he's got he's got his life together yeah yeah i mean he's got some wacky opinions but sure you know who doesn't right who doesn't <laughs> um 
I I like Lucas. I like I like yeah. all of them. Yeah. Will, uh, who is the kid who goes missing in season one, uh, he's a little bit of a wet blanket. But yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, not his fault, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get it. What is I, your character? Uh, I am PTSD with a bowl cut. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much <laughs> okay uh what what is your opinion of of the newcomer to this group max uh i'm interested enough so far um i kind of like i don't know i it, she she brings in a unique enough energy into the group that that it's still sort of interesting and i do like I mean, I, I, I do love kind of the mystery and then the obsession that surrounds her when they find out that she's the person who, like, beat their top score on Dig Dug and a number of other arcade games because, I mean, that's how I would react. So <laughs> I'm immediately sympathetic uh, to all of that. Um, and so, yeah, she's she's interesting enough to me uh, so far. Okay. That's good. Uh, naturally, we do have uh, Winona Ryder coming back. We've got David Harbour coming back. And uh, I mean, I just two other characters that I that I really liked. Yeah. In the first. Um, and of course, <laughs> Sean Astin is <laughs> is like, I mean, the only other who else? <sighs> yeah. He he's such an '80s character yeah. guy, but he has managed to, because he like moved from, you know, being this this kid in Goonies, and then he did Rudy, and yeah. that that helped him transition into, you know, sort of more adult roles. Yeah, and then he's Samwise. Yep, the guy doesn't freaking age. Yeah, he really doesn't. Yeah, I mean, maybe a little more swollen but like. yeah he is he is more swollen than he than he ever used to be but yeah and i love him in this i love his character um i love how positive he is i like that he's kind of a dork um i told i'm he, totally into it totally he into reminds it. me a lot of your father <laughs> i could yeah, i could kind of see that he is an abundance of nice and Oh, hey, how you doing, buddy? Right? He just wants to engage and, you know, it's awesome. <laughs> so how many how many more episodes before Elijah Wood shows up? Because that's just, I know, that's my seriously, question. I know, I know, I know, like any minute. Um, and Paul Reiser, too, in kind of a bizarre role. But, um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, these, these first three episodes, I really solidly, completely into it. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is nice, nice to see. I'm glad that, because that, that first season it was it was such a unique thing, um, and they did they did such a good job with the show. Um, it was fun from beginning to end, and you know you're always concerned that the sequels are gonna just crash and burn immediately. Um, and this has been it's really exciting to see that that they've brought. I th I feel like you know at least these first three episodes they brought their A game into this. So. Yeah. Well, it's always you. You always worry with with these TV shows that are such a nice self-contained plot. Yeah, and they run for a series, and you're like, "That's that's great." Yeah, and you're like, "Now what's going to happen for True Detective season two? It's right. like we got all <laughs> sorts of ideas, guys. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so far we're we're not in in that territory, though. I I don't think. Yeah. Well, I didn't dislike um, True Detective season two, but it it was not the powerhouse that no. that the first one was. Yeah. If it had just been called a uh, random HBO show, <laughs> it it probably wouldn't have been hated on as yeah, much. Yeah, probably probably not. Probably not. Yeah, probably not terrible in its own right, but definitely a far cry from the first season. Uh, I don't know if, if it's even necessary to, to rate this. I'm sure that we would both say nice things about it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know if you think that it's worth talking about spoilers at this point. I think. Yeah, I, I mean, there's nothing. I don't know. There's nothing like real specific. I'm actually um 
I actually had to stop myself uh, from watching it because I don't really want to binge this entire season in a day like some do. I do want to like savor it for a while. So um. and here's the thing we picked probably of the three episodes we picked. They always try to get you that little hook to watch, make you watch yep. the next one. Yeah. And it's like the first two are hooks that I could easily not bite on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the hook at the end of episode three is like, yep. Shit. Yeah. It was hard to not. <laughs> yeah. It was hard. <laughs> and it's only like nine episodes. So we're already yeah, a freaking a- third of the way through this damn show. I was, I was a little bit surprised to see that it was only nine episodes, yeah. but then again, there's there's a part of me that's like, well, nine is a really strange number for an order. Yeah. And maybe they were like, well, we wrote we wrote something and it's nine episodes long. Yeah. What do you want? Yeah. That's what I'm, I wonder if Netflix gave them the obligatory 13 episode run and they were like, you know what? No, <laughs> we got nine episodes here. So we got nine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, most of these actors aren't super busy. That's true. I mean, Nobody's knocking down David Harbour's door. Right. I mean, he's he's great as Hopper, but like like I only have now noticed him as an actor when I see him in other Yeah. Same here. Quite literally shit that he has done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, ah, oh, it's Hopper. <laughs> yep. I like him in another setting. He is amazing in this setting. <laughs> um I mean Winona Ryder. Yeah. Uh, it kind of felt like she's been on like downward cruise control career wise. I don't know what she's been doing. Yeah. A, I mean, like a decade. Yeah. Like, like the, the last big thing that I can remember her in is, uh, a scanner darkly or something like that. Oh I mean, she, yeah. I've seen her in several things since then, but that was kind of like, when that came out, I feel like that was still kind of a big deal. And, yeah, and you oh, know, yeah. if, if you're on Lifetime's uh, reenactment of, uh, I don't know, anything, I don't think that counts as like a real acting gig. <laughs> I don't I don't Probably, think she's there yeah. yet, but. Yeah, maybe, yeah. The trajectory seems to be. <laughs> True. In the, in the direction. Um, I'm not trying to be mean. I still love you, Winona. <laughs> I would still make love to you, mm-hmm. Winona. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do you have anything that you'd like to say to Winona? Uh, Winona, I appreciate that you're back on Stranger Things. It's nice to see you again. Do you have anything inappropriate? Or I don't. To say? I'm going to okay. let you own that one. <laughs> this has been like a thing for a long time. I know. I know like it's not it's not like a you know it's a legit uh <laughs> real it was like connection that you have I don't know about that <laughs> but it was definitely like one once it was like you know what Legos are great but chicks yeah they got something going on wow and it was like Winona Ryder, she's pretty good looking. And Tag she Angel, remained. are you about to take us through your pubescent experience? Nope. <laughs> Waking I am up a robot. Certain. I have been this age my entire life. <laughs> I have always been the oldest person alive. That's true. That is true. <laughs> All right. We're done with this subject. Okay. The subject is over. <laughs> Winona, I love you. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Yes. Okay. So we're we're moving on. Moving on. Here we go. The Orville <clears throat> is a Star Trek inspired comedy on Fox, created and starring Seth MacFarlane of Family Guy and American Dad fame. We will be talking mostly about episode seven, I imagine. But uh, Midget Radio is here. I think he probably showed up to talk about this specifically, so he could rain on my parade. Yep. Midget Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me everything that you hate about the Orville majority rule. Tactic Angel, this is the worst show that has ever been made. Um, 
I can't think of anything worse, and I think you're a bad person for liking it. That seems like the <laughs> the average level of uh, internet. <laughs> Well, that's where we are. So, you know, this is a YouTube show. I disagree. <laughs> I hate the band that you like, and I hate you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I watched this. I haven't seen episodes. Oh, whatever. Did I miss anything? I haven't seen the episode, the two episodes prior to this. I, I don't say... think it matters, but... Uh, I mean, interestingly enough, you do get a little bit of character development in each one of these, mm-hmm. um, which I th- I think is kind of it's kind of following uh, sort of a, a sitcom, like a frenzy way of, yeah. of introducing characters and, and giving them, you know, personality quirks, not necessarily real characters like nobody thinks that, you know, uh any of the friends people do they have names probably yeah i'm pretty sure they have names um, i think it's not, not just like friend one friend two <laughs> it's not like it's not like dark matter <laughs> yeah it's, 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 it's like yeah <laughs> they just all wake up in a coffee shop not knowing who they are and <laughs> pretty much uh what is it rachel and uh i think i know all of them ross monica right. chandler fuck Joey, Phoebe, Joey. Phoebe, nailed it. All right, so <laughs> I I think it's kind of following that kind of thing. So you you do see it, and there are little there are little payoffs that come um, in subsequent episodes if you see all of them. But I'd say for for the most part, the the plot you don't really. You didn't really miss anything in this episode if okay. you hadn't seen the ones before. I got the sense that like maybe they're doing a little bit because there was a little bit of inter- like an interaction with Alara, and I guess she's like going through a bunch of dudes or whatever. Her dating life, anyway, um, yeah, was addressed. She, so <laughs> it's it's hard for Alara to date because she's stronger than any of the men on the ship. That seems weird, right? Don't you think that seems weird? I, like that's something I would be into. I just feel like that's you know I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't i mean i get it you get it we both like gina carano right i imagine that the physical reality of that can actually be more intimidating <laughs> if it if it's not just some fevered dream that you're having i don't know and she's actually she's actually got you in the sleeper and you're like i'm not I just, super into this like what if Winona Ryder could kick your ass tech? <laughs> uh, I mean I <laughs> I I said I get it with <laughs> you know there's Gina Carano you can you can replace that with you know a, a super humanly strong Winona Ryder uh, though she is kind of a waif she is a waif she is dainty but um I think I think that like I would still go into that, you know, yes, but <laughs> I I understand that like it, if I'm seriously injured, <laughs> right, then then I might have to rethink that. There could be a time where you're like, you know, <laughs> I do feel a little threatened in this situation. I'm not sure I like that. <laughs> Like I can say right now, it, I mean, it it looks good in my mind, but it just, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of want to just let you keep going. This is, I appreciate, I appreciate Tactic Angel, how much thought you're putting into this hypothetical scenario. I think about all <laughs> sorts of things. Yes, all sorts. And, and one of those things <laughs> may be the physical implications of, of, you know, being with Gina Carano. Right. Yeah. Man, we still need to do that open letter to her. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a New Year's resolution that, that you put out. I'll do it. But you'll have to like do a footnote or something. So I'll have to just footnote it okay. right in there. I can make it I can make it creepy. I think the footnote will be longer than the letter, but <laughs> it'll probably be more well written and have larger <laughs> words. 
Sure. Anyway, the Orville. Um. Uh, I don't. Why don't you? Why don't you start? I think like we've established, I'm not that high on this show. You are higher than I am. So, why don't you take it? Um, how did you feel about this episode? So I'm gonna briefly give a story synopsis. Okay. Uh, and then we can talk about um the other stuff. I would suggest, uh, listener. I'm just gonna put a spoiler tag on this. Okay. Because. I I think that you do well to watch the show before you, you hear any of the stuff I'm going to say. Okay. But that said, uh, basically the Orville is dispatched to try to find two scientists who are observing a society that is very similar to, let's say, early 21st century Earth. <laughs> um, it's weird how that happens. It yeah. happens actually a lot in... in TOS too. It absolutely does. <laughs> we don't have enough money for the sets. Yep. Let's go outside. <laughs> hey, nice. Time travel, time, something, illusions, mm. etc. Uh, so the landing team quickly learns that the society has some weird legal customs. Uh, when one of the crew members behaves in such a way that you'd think they're on like a Seth McFarland show. True. Uh, and he does. Uh, he does. He has some moves with a statue. <laughs> yes. Um, that gets uploaded to the internet. Everybody hates him. And apparently being unpopular on this planet is their version of a uh, criminal. Mm -hmm. So uh, in general, I'd say I really appreciated this episode. Okay. And I appreciated this episode in the same way that I appreciate all of the most ham-fisted attempts at telling an audience something is silly or wrong <laughs> from TOS. Uh huh. I mean, if and I'll I'll also say I'm going to bring a little bit of Star Trek uh, continues into this because sure I f I feel like we we both know the episode that I'm talking about. Mm hmm. And. Um, I'm going to say we have TOS. Let that be uh, your last battlefield. Yeah. Uh, we have Star Trek continues the Hillary Clinton episode. <laughs> yeah. And then we have majority rule. And one of the things that Tactic Angel thinks about a lot, in addition to all of these, you know, uh, incredibly attractive, famous, wealthy women that he will never actually meet is, you know, I I didn't like the Hillary Clinton episode. Right. And I thought it was really cringe. And and at the time I was, I thought a lot about, well, if I had been, say, a somewhat backwards person and I watched Let That Be Your Last Battlefield, which is, you know, the episode that he's black on the wrong side. Right. And it's just so on the nose. Yeah. That would I have been like, uh, I don't think that Star Trek should be telling me who I should and shouldn't like or whatever. Even though I think, I think probably is, is kind of, you know, just the toll to get in the door, the cover charge. You probably already accept that you shouldn't be discriminatory if you like Star Trek, because <laughs> I mean, just I mean, just the bridge crew. Yeah, you, you got a, a white guy, you got an alien, yeah. you got you know a Russian, yeah, which is, I guess, maybe not as big a deal for us today. No, except it might be starting to get to be a bigger deal. I don't know. It's hard to tell <laughs> if the tell. Russians are good or bad because. <laughs> The same people tell us that they are and aren't at different times. <laughs> and then you've got, you know, a Japanese guy. You've got a, a, a black woman. You've got, you're already probably of the mind that, you know, I shouldn't discriminate. Right. Though that said, um, there, there was a guy who apparently wrote a letter to William Shatner after 
uh, the Uhura Kirk kiss and said, you know, I'm not like much for the intermingling of, <laughs> of people, but that Uhura is a fine looking lady. <laughs> And so maybe maybe that did change their minds. So maybe there were people who were back in the day who would who would look at let that be your last battlefield in the same way that I looked at kind of the 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 cringe effect of um the Hillary Clinton episode. And it's part of that is also mind-boggling because you just assume that there are female captains. Yeah, like, you will. Yeah, the premise had uh, some question. Yeah, the premise was. <laughs> and then they they have a Commodore who's in outranks Kirk. Yeah, she's in charge of a star base. Yeah. And doling yeah. out these assignments. And yeah. you're like, so you're like, well, how is the how unequal is this society? And really, like, really, I mean, at this point, it's it, it's it, it just it kind of gets in the way <laughs> of. of but the how premise. much is. Yeah. But how much of that is me rationalizing that that I don't I don't particularly buy into the underlying assertion, or is the underlying assertion just wrong or silly or played out in a, in a poor setting? So there, there's a lot of stuff to think about. Yeah. Now, um, with majority rule, we have a society where everybody is basically wearing like a thumbs up and a thumbs down button. Yeah. And if you get to half a million, you know, dislikes, uh, then then you are in trouble. Yeah. Then you're you're you know an untouchable. People won't serve you at a at like a public diner. Uh, they just don't want anything to do with you because they think they think you're an ass. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so I. S- and and it's a really easy parallel to make because it's basically the same mechanic that we have uh, on yeah. like <laughs> on like any social media thing. And you see so many people who are just even if they're not um ever convicted, even if they actually didn't do anything wrong, their lives can be basically destroyed because people go out on the internet and try to destroy them. Yeah. Um, basically by using the, the mob rule and, yeah. you know, this, this person is untouchable. Everything that they stand for is wrong. They should, they should literally be ostracized, sent to Elba or whatever the modern equivalent of a prison Island is. And we should just forget they ever existed. And I enjoyed the on the nose you know, this is this is kind of a shitty thing uh, to do, and I actually appreciated some of the, um, and I I think it was intentional. You may not. I think the uh, the way that they were trying to make John a more sympathetic person <laughs> was basically to give him a lot of uh, sympathetic character. Uh, or personality things, history, uh, give him a certain number of, of victim points himself, and and then people would take more pity on him, mm-hmm. which is not, it is not an intellectual exercise. That is just an emotional appeal, which uh, as as the robot people, um, as their ambassador, I, I do not accept. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I have, I definitely have some stuff to say about that, but yes. So that's, that's kind of my opening. You can go ahead and tell me that uh, (laughs) it's terrible and you hate it and that I'm a bad person. You are a a terrible person. I'm giving you a down vote for your opinions on the Orville. Um, And you need to be re-educated, but Mm -hmm. not real. I mean, this, this, uh, you know, it, 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 it's hard to talk about this show because it is fucking, it, it is such an overt homage to Star Trek. 
so much of what it's drawing on and so much of its appeal is based on something that existed before and that is better. Um, and I have a hard time <laughs> relating to this show because this show, like, it feels a little bit like Weekend at Bernie's to me. Like, it's dragging around the dead body that is Star Trek and trying to convince everybody that it is still alive and is apparently doing that job fairly effectively on a lot of its audience. Um, and I, I don't really get it. So this episode in itself, divorced from um, its obvious parallels to Star Trek, is not, it's not a bad episode. It's a, it, is, it is yet another, it is, it is little more than a morality play. Um, and and it's fine for what it is, and I don't have, I mean, the points, I guess the points or, or the sort of thematic substance of this episode, there's nothing really debatable in it. I mean, there's, I don't have any, like, <laughs> it points out all of the serious, legit weaknesses uh, with a society that is based only on majority opinion. Um and that has a relationship with to like two other people that treats other people um, as just subject matter uh, for the opinions of of the masses, whether those opinions are legit or not. Um, and it's brutal in that sense, um, and it, and it highlights the damage that that kind of mob mentality, which is little more than little more than just bullying, I think at, at the end of the day, um, all of that stuff is really legitimate. And fine. But the problem that I have with this is that like when you talk about when you talk about let that be your last battlefield and you're like, well, this is I mean, it's just absurdly on the nose and it is itself little more than a morality play. Mm -hmm. A lot of Star Trek is it little is, more than it a is. morality play. But um, but the difference is in at least that episode, it's tackling like a subject that was very <laughs> was very fucking real. Um, at the time and divided the country pretty significantly. Um, and, and, and the interracial kiss between Kirk and Uhura, that was a huge fucking like revolutionary deal for something to be shown on television. It was risky. Like this kind of subject matter was risky at the time that it was broadcast on network TV. So to suggest that like that is the same as, hey, cyberbullying is bad. It's just, this show doesn't really take any risks. I think it's just, I think at least, and this is, this is, this is how I feel. And maybe I'm wrong about like the tenor of the country or how the country is as a whole right now. But I think most people, the vast majority of people understand that upvoting and downvoting people and judging people over harshly on the internet is essentially a bad thing to do. Um, I think that message has been been sent <laughs> i don't think there's a lot of people that need to be necessarily convinced that it's wrong i mean i think generally americans understand that that stuff is wrong and sometimes forget it when it's their team uh who's on the line um but you know i it, it it's not it's a it's a decent enough episode it's not really it's not risky though and it's not really all that eye-opening i would say um it's not offensive for sure. And I think maybe in some degree, to some degree, that's, that's a little bit of my issue with it. And that's why I have this issue with, with fucking comparing it to Star Trek, because we forget about the time that, uh, the original series aired in. Um, and we forget kind of the, po we don't have any real sympathy or empathy for the potency of those issues, um, as they were then that we do now. So, you know, talking about racism is bad is a different fucking subject in the 60s. Um, it's a different subject than it is now. And it was a much riskier and more controversial subject than online bullying is bad right now. Um, so, you know, it's fine. I'm happy that you like it. I, 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 I'm fine with it. It's, it's great that other people like it. It's just 
if you could take Star Trek completely out of this show, I would have so much less of an issue with it. Um, and I and I feel like every time we compare it to Star Trek, we're really just forgetting what <laughs> what Star Trek was actually good at because it was not just a series of morality plays set in space. That's not what it was. Um, and and part of its strengths were the subject matter that it decided that and that it had the courage to tackle at the time. And and we cannot forget this: the vibrancy of the characters. Who were on those shows. The, the Orville doesn't have a Kirk Spock McCoy relationship or chemistry. And I don't think it ever will. Um, and that is as much a part of Star Trek. And is such an important part of Star Trek's legacy. Um, that to take this. I just feel like we give this show the Orville fucking brownie points. Because it's set in space. And it's on an exploratory vessel. And it looks like Star Trek. And it reminds me of the next generation mostly. Um and so when it throws in these little morality plays, it's like, oh, my God, this is like exactly what Star Trek used to be. And it's fucking not. It's not. It's not. It's not as good. And it never, I don't think it ever will be. OK, I can. Ex- I want to hit on a, a couple of things that that I think you're wrong about. <laughs> OK. Um, I am not convinced based on my interaction with social media that that people like we can all say cyberbullying is bad, but I don't think yeah. that people equate what they do on the internet with cyberbullying. So I, I think I see where you're coming from, and I'm not going to fight back with you too much on on, on this. I, because I, I mean, I, I could be wrong, and Donald Trump is the fucking president of the United States, so the country could have, <laughs> could be a little, I don't know a little worse on this subject than, than I actually think most people are, but um, I don't know. Well, here's the, here's the thing. Like we don't have to go that far into the past to see where like people have had le- legitimate issues with um, being essentially upvoted and downvoted when they, when they were not guilty. Yeah. Like just straight up, not guilty. Um, if we go back uh, a few months you have people who are out on the internet saying, oh, this is a picture from, you know, such and such political rally that I disagree with. And, right. and this is that person. And you have like Kyle Quinn, who was uh, misidentified as a Nazi, yeah. right? Yeah. And and he had to leave his house and he had to basically fight to keep his job. Yeah. Just because somebody out there thought he looked like a person who was at this thing. Yeah. First of all, that we would like going after people for their political views is, is a fairly shaky, shaky thing. And it, it gets back to kind of the, the sort of blacklisting that you had uh, back in Hollywood in the, in the fifties and sixties, which I think that most of us should think was not, super good <laughs> yeah um but or then the you have mccarthyism the other parallel <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i those two things are are you know hand in hand yeah because most of the people who were being blacklisted were were people like you who who think that we should sink cruise liners and yeah and kill two-thirds of the world's population yeah well i'm waiting for the counter argument to that but yeah <laughs> <laughs> So they had bad ideas, but that didn't mean that they shouldn't be allowed to work. Sure. And in the same way, we have people today who have bad ideas or just have a bad day or or have or make a mistake. And, you know, he works at Burger King. Everyone should show up at the Burger King on Main Street and protest until they fire this guy, which will probably take like 15 minutes. Right. Get out of my fucking drive through. Yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah. But uh, so you have you have legitimate things happening like that. You can you can say the same thing about people who are uh, falsely accused of of crimes. Uh, I mean, Duke Lacrosse, you go back to that. Uh, basically, all those kids. Uh, I'm not sure if any of them were thrown out. There are certainly I have heard stories of people who are thrown out of college. Yeah for things that they did not do because somebody just managed to get a mob together yeah to to run them out of town 
And that's not really what our justice system system should be about. No. And and actually, uh, Matt Christensen, who's kind of a, I'm not sure how to describe him, but he does a YouTube channel that I I listen to, and I usually find him to be mostly on point. Uh, had a good video that came out within the last week or two. I will probably add that to our description just for fun. Okay. Um, that talks about a society that wants free speech. And from a, a free speech standpoint, you have uh, the government can't compel you uh, to speak or not speak a certain way under the First Amendment. It doesn't have to do so much with like you have to give me a soapbox in order to stand right. on or I have to give you a soapbox. Yeah. But he had a, a a good point that a society that values free speech should not be in the habit of uh, routinely shutting people down because you disagree with them. Because if if that becomes normalized, the laws reflect what what is normal in society and that the laws would naturally mm-hmm. change too. Sort of. So if you want a free and open society, you have to be willing. We all have to be willing, or at least the vast majority of us, to hear things that we don't want to hear from time to time. Mm-hmm. So I thought, like, as I was watching it, I was thinking of all these things, and and that's where I like it. And I think, like, you can argue that certainly the Orville doing this show is not stepping off a cliff, kind of like, you know, making out with... A, with a black chick right. in public in the fifties was, but there, there probably isn't anything that's parallel to that. Right. Today. Well, so right, right now there, there isn't as much. I mean, I would say that Star Trek continues decision to tackle Hillary Clinton at all is a far more bold decision. Um, and is the kind of thing that I expect from Star Trek more so than something like, Hey, social media is sometimes dangerous from, the Orville, um, but there, and it's proven, there's nobody. But it's there's proven, nobody who thinks, oh, we shouldn't have women in the workplace. But that's not really what. That's not. That's not really particularly the issue that 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 episode of Star Trek Continues was addressing. We don't have the other part we don't of it specifically have a female captain. No, of but the but part of part of what they were tackling class starship. Part of what they were tackling is that she's not owed the position just because she's a female. Mm -hmm. That's part of the thing that they were actually addressing at the time, which is a bolder stance. Um, And they totally took a pass. Do you remember that? (laughs) Well, he said, I mean, Kirk at least basically said that straight out, Um, which is, and and it is, and it's a little frustrating. And it's like, really, I mean, between this woman or fucking Spock, seriously. uh, I mean, there is, there is that, there is that issue with the premise, but at least to address that, um, is is a bolder because because that was a lot of the argument. The first female pre, the first female, the first female, like that's a huge fucking deal. It's, it's all historic and all that. And hey, even if that's the even if that's the case, you're not you're that doesn't make that doesn't mean that you are owed this position or that or that this is the best or that you're the best choice for this position. That is in itself a a, a bolder undertaking um, than than something like this and. I mean, but I gotta you tell you, have, it's proven. You still by- <laughs> don't have the stepping off the cliff thing because that's not a cliff. Yeah, nobody. No, it's not. It's not. I'm not saying that it is, but it's more. It's bolder than what the Orville has done with this episode. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It's it's not. It's not particularly. Ex- it's not extreme I, in the risky nature of it. But like, there, I, I don't. I, I just don't know I who's disagree. on. I disagree. I disagree based on <laughs> on the idea that that there is a large segment of the population that is willing to assassinate other people online. And I think that that percentage of the population is vastly, vastly so, larger than the number of people who who are, you know, interested in keeping a woman out of the presidency at but, all costs. But no, okay, no. I think you're seeing it a little differently than I intend. Uh, to Because the point is... There are people who think that Hillary Clinton should have been the president and that her femaleness was part of that sort of uh, 
whatever you want to call it um that part of her merit it, like right like that was part of the issue it's like a feminist thing like the, oh, this could be the first female the fact that she is a woman particularly when you saw that argument from feminists who are like if you if you're a woman and you don't vote for fucking hillary clinton you are anti-woman like it's like those kind of arguments <laughs> were being made at the time and this show pushed against star trek continues that episode pushed against that idea which is bolder now, I think there are more people who did legitimately think like that than people who think it's okay to assassinate and ruin lives indiscriminately online. I do think that. Um, I think that's a much more deeply held position than, well, that guy's a shithead, so I should fuck him up. And even if it turns out he's not a shithead, I don't have to feel oh, well. bad about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that person is rarer than the person who thinks that if you're a woman and you voted against Hillary Clinton... You you don't get to have your woman card anymore. You get your vagina taken away. I guess like you know I, you know what I, I mean. Think, like that's a but that that's what I'm saying. That's what makes Star Trek continues a better show and and a much more a, a show that is so much more in line uh, with the legacy of Star Trek and not because it's featuring the same characters, but because I think it understands more what kind of shows uh, Star Trek was capable of doing. Um, and the Orville I think falls. So far, not that it's a bad show in itself, but it falls so fucking far from the heights uh, that that legit Star Trek episodes can achieve. No, I get it. You're you're again comparing 720 episodes versus now seven, which is <laughs> right. Seven episodes of a show that relies on those past 720 to get kind people of. to watch it. To get no, yeah, I, it I get it, but it's like <laughs> at at a certain point you would say. Like Star Trek shouldn't exist. Star Trek at a certain point is not necessary. I don't, I don't know. What are you talking about? Because if there isn't the boldness, if there aren't the things out there to talk about that are important enough to make these morality plays, mm -hmm. then, then it's just, it's just starship porn, right? Yeah. But, and <laughs> It doesn't and have I mean, to be science fiction in order to be a morality play, but yeah. No, but like so much of so much of Star Trek is, and then also so much of um like if you go into um if you go into like a Star Trek season one or two of TNG, yeah, and somebody tells you Captain Picard is not a human being. He is the physical embodiment of the philosopher king. Yeah. And over here, Data is playing the part of a child's innocence. And you just, you don't think of them as characters. You can actually enjoy quite a few more of those episodes um, than, than probably are deserved to. <laughs> but, I guess so. Well, I mean, like season one and two is pretty rough. It's pretty yeah. rough. Yeah. Um, there are certain, certainly, if you think about people less as as a consistent character in that time, um, in those, you know, collection of whatever fifty two episodes or so. Yeah. Then, then you would enjoy it more. And. And so, <laughs> what I'm saying is, if you if you're saying that the Orville can't be a great show because it's not taking the risks. I'm not sure that the risks are always going to exist, right? Because like how many things can you do nowadays in in the age of, you know, the the fear factor and uh what is it? There's a show that's called Naked and Afraid. Like yeah. You have a ridiculous number of things that are on television that uh would could and should never have existed. If you were to if we were back in like the, you know, five channel days. Right. So at a certain point, you're going to run out of risk because well, like, we, we keep advancing. We keep making progress towards yeah. what we hope is, is, you know, a, a liberal utopia. But at a certain point, there's there's not those risks. Nothing can ever be as good as what came before it because, because if that's part of the litmus test, 
you're always going to score low on it. Right. So, but here's the problem with that. The Orville creates that issue for itself. It, it created that problem for itself because it is so nakedly relying on the legacy of Star Trek in order to get people to watch it and in order to do these kinds of episodes. And that what's make, that's what makes it partially so fucking pedestrian. It's not its own thing. It's always it's always going to be compared to Star Trek. It always wants to be compared to Star Trek. And that's how people watch that fucking show in the first place. So this isn't some requirement that I'm unfairly putting on the show. It's something it invited unto itself. And it's not going to achieve I don't I just don't think that anything that has been demonstrated in these epi- in these se- in these episodes so far and I've only seen 4 of the se- or 5 of the 7 I guess at this point. There's nothing in there that to me seems like the writers are actually capable of tackling an issue as compellingly as certain episodes of Star Trek have done before, particularly when it comes to stuff that is a little bit more ethically gray. Um, things where it's not obvious what the right answer is, you know, I, where it's not just I mean, pointing at that. It's something and saying, well, that's bad. And we can all feel great about good. Thank you for telling me that's bad. Now let's move on to the next show. I mean, yeah, I, I still don't find this to be like a convincing point of view because at if I were to try to uh, apply even that logic to to anything that came after the next generation, uh, I'm thinking like the first couple of seasons or certainly the few, first few episodes of, of DS9 were not super great. No, um, yeah, no. Um you would you would never have had the stuff that came after it and those are clearly directly relying on it they have star trek in yeah the title. totally yeah absolutely absolutely yeah so like i mean there are a couple of good episodes of enterprise there are yeah uh several that you find to be inferior there are two in particular that are <laughs> um Just there awful, are but there are not very many good episodes of Voyager. I solidly enjoy seasons four through seven. For I one know. through three are uh, terrible, but for this for the same reasons with seven of nine that we were talking about when Owen Ryder earlier. No, I get that's it. That's wrong. But yes, seven of nine is, is like a legit it. character. And <laughs> <laughs> a legit character that you There are would. some people who are incapable of seeing past the tits, but I am not one of them. <laughs> and I it's sad past, to me. I think it's really unfair. Like it's really unfair to Jerry I see Ryan. See past the tits because Jerry Ryan is really the deep. I'm, I'm tits blind. If you if I to, to borrow a tactic angel, <laughs> I'm tits blind uh, in the same way that tactic angel is apparently colorblind. But <laughs> um, I have probably watched too many shows with you to believe that. No, but tits blind. <laughs> You Listeners, you are free to make your own Tech decision. Angel doesn't know what black people look like, and <laughs> I don't see tits, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> I think that if if that has to be if that has to be a measure, and I don't know that making something that's similar to Star Trek means that you necessarily have to buy into your interpretation of of you know whether something is is bold enough whether something is uh i don't know am i making any sense no Ta- okay if you if you're a star trek I don't fan know that it, who thinks that star trek is just star morality trek. plays in space then i guess the orville is the perfect show for you if that's all you really see star trek as then this show i guess is knocking it out of the fucking park but, but I, I don't see it that way i I love the the morality plays. See, that's why does one of it the... have to be tra- like it could just be anything. It, I mean, it could it could just be like there have been shows that have tackled this subject matter and have done it more compelling. Shit, there's an episode of Community that's not only funnier that tackles this issue, um, but is also I think a little more poignant. Um, but it, it doesn't. But because it ships in space and they have uniforms. Uh, it, the, the start, you can't get away from the Star Trek thing. That stupid, nostalgic feeling is still so much, I think, of what the appeal is for the Orville. 
And I'm not going to pretend that it's anything more than that. The like, soft science fiction thing, though. Soft science fiction has always been about being able to, and particularly for for people who who maybe are are if you're on the like the Myers Briggs intuitive, if if you're talking about that and you're more interested in concepts than you are in say necessarily the particulars of physical reality and then you're going to find the morality play thing that that science fiction can give you more compelling because you're able to divorce the actual implications the the nitty-gritty the the modern baggage that comes along with you know community it takes place in a community college i understand how a community college works. <laughs> I understand the people who go to community college. They live in a time and space, uh, as far as I can tell, similar to mine. And so I get all that baggage whenever I watch this. If I have to, if you have to take apart, if you parse apart reality into, you know, things that are happening, and then you have the higher moral concepts, and you have kind of the logic that that gets people to do one thing to another, then that's what soft science fiction fans, and I am one of those people, have always been into. Which is fine. Yeah. Like hard science fiction to me is just what I've been saying all, all the time, space porn. I don't really love the episodes of the next generation where, you know, they create an inverse tachyon pulse. Right. At, right at the with the proper frequency modulation yeah. whatever nonsense yeah. like this is just techno babble and i don't i don't care i yeah. like that somebody sat down and created a <laughs> list of rules that tells me how a warp drive works yeah because then at least it's consistent yeah what i don't care about is you know theoretical particle physics right that is pretty low on my to-do list. Right. And so that's hard science fiction. And and for the most part, you won't find me talking a lot about hard science fiction because, first of all, it's not incredibly popular. Yeah. And um, I would probably find it to be relatively boring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, c- certainly when I read Heinlein, like the parts that I'm interested in when I read Heinlein is not, you know, how does, how does a starship trooper's right. power armor work? Right. I'm like, I am way more interested in it when Rico is talking about the psychology of the individual as it <laughs> relates to the state yeah. and the, the necessary sacrifice that, that individuals willingly make in order to, to make a, a free society, et cetera, and voting principles, right. nonsense. All this stuff. Yeah. That's way more interesting than, you know, how, how does the power armor work? What's the what's the jump drive? What do the people on Mars use for, you know, uh, I don't know, fusion? What what is it? Yeah. What's the what's the etymology of this weird <laughs> fucking word that I have to read over <laughs> and over again? I agree with all of that. And like I said earlier, it's not that this is a bad episode. Or that the Orville is a bad show in itself. I'm coming at you, bitch. It's that it's not I'm fucking you, Star Trek. This it's is not Star this Trek. Is good. No, it's not. I hate all of your ideas. <laughs> I hate you. I hate your mom. I hate your fucking way too friendly dad. I hate your dog. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, Tag. The, the episode itself is not bad. I don't have any particular issue with it. Um, it's just that it's not. It's not what everybody constantly compares it to. I don't think that you are going to ever give this a chance. I ha- I have just said, I don't know how. It be, it's think, like anytime I say something negative about the Orville, no! you take it personally and think that I hate the show beyond all recognition. And I don't. I don't hate it. But it's. I hate you did say the only thing I hate is people show ever. I did say that but and then I wanted to and kill you that after you that and that hated me and you and, need to be reeducated. And, that is uh-huh. that is true. But that that there's a lot more going on with that statement than just your attitude toward the Orville. But um <laughs> <laughs> 
the show itself though to get to get to get back to this episode um it wasn't bad i i still think i i still find episode three kind of offensive but um this episode really wasn't all that bad i do kind of wish and the thing i wanted to talk about that you mentioned earlier i thought it was brilliant and could have been so much better when the when they made that effort to um make what's his name what the guy who got in trouble what the hell is that character's name john john when they when he got in trouble their effort to infiltrate the feed the fucking internet basically uh and make him more sympathetic (laughs) i wish now if this now i will say this if this was a better show they would have recognized how smart that is and they would have leaned in they would have spent more time lampooning that like they should have like the the he, people really love it when veterans like reunite reunite with their dog like that kind of stupid shit that if you can just show him a, a video of him with like a cat if they if they had leaned into that a little bit harder and spent more time lampooning that stuff i really would have enjoyed that this episode instead of just the last like 30 seconds of the show <laughs> coming up with that like if they had if they, if 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 they had uh, invented a story where he was like the brains behind Keyboard Cat, that would have been fucking brilliant. And everybody would be like, "Oh my god, he's responsible for Keyboard Cat! What a goddamn genius!" I guess he's not guilty of anything. Like that would it would have been so much more fun if they had focused on that. I really liked that idea, and I I I do feel like in some ways it was a little bit of a missed opportunity. But the fact that it was in there in the first place is quality. Um, that's that's quality writing, and I, I and I liked. I, I did actually enjoy that that part of the episode. Actually, there that did remind me of something else that I liked about this, which was, <laughs> which was, um, and I I had thought about this the first time I watched. I've seen this episode. Um, I've watched it two or three times just because <laughs> I I was like, was that really good, or was I just like yeah. <laughs> drinking a lot of whiskey, or what, what? Because I did send, I did, okay, I got a message um, on Friday from one of my uh, friends on the PlayStation Network. Okay. And it said, um, Tack, were you drunk when you wrote this? And I was like, I don't actually, uh, like, I didn't have an active memory, but when I looked at it, I was like, yeah, I remember writing that. Okay. <laughs> And the answer is yes. Okay. Um, so, you know, you have to go back because you could be seeing it through, you know, amber colored glasses. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, second time, pretty good. I, eh, whatever. Um, but it, when I was watching it the first time, I thought, you know, how many, how many of these major sports stars do we have out there that, that do something just yeah. horrid yeah right yeah you know you got michael vick you've got uh several <laughs> several people pick pick your poison for uh you know uh sexual assault vic yeah. or uh perpetrators that are nba stars or uh football people or or even baseball so you have all these people and like, as soon as they win a ring, as soon as they win a pennant, yep. as long as they can throw a 103 mile an hour fastball, you're like, yeah, well, it doesn't we need matter. Him. We need him. So <laughs> he's a fucking hero. Yeah. Yeah. I, the, the apology tour thing was fucking just brilliant. That was aw- like, that was, that was fantastic. And I wish that there, I wish, I really wish they had just leaned, they, they had jumped into a little bit more of how that process actually, cause I like the, like the second interview that that he went on, where he there was like, go out there, have a lot of energy, try to engage with the audience, you know, make people believe that you're, <laughs> you're a sympathetic human. And he goes out there and he's trying to like high five everybody. And the guy who interviews him like, what? it seems like you're not taking this seriously. You just ran out and struck a number of my audience members. <laughs> you're like, like you just can't win. I mean, that kind of stuff was... That kind of stuff was was really great, and 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 I think did such a good job of showing how just fucking shallow and <laughs> impossible it is to please the masses uh, sometimes, and how fickle an audience can be. That kind of stuff was fun, um, and I wish 
I just wish that there was a little bit more of it or that it was a little bit like more acute in its in, in its attack on some of that stuff. Um because it's legit. I mean it's that it's 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 totally legit. You appeal to people people's uh more emotional um instincts and you can get away with a lot <laughs> yeah you know well i mean you see it you see it in politics if it's my guy i don't i don't care right um you see it in in baseball football especially basketball right if it's my guy i don't care yeah um and then at the same time it's like it, the apology tour the just sympathy points or victimhood points yeah whatever you want to call it yeah they're all just emotional appeals and and honestly we we ought to really just rely on good old-fashioned 21st century justice right 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 that's two weeks in the iso cubes i don't give a fuck but <laughs> but yes uh so i mean i, I like that um here's here's kind of a funny anecdote okay and it kind of proves a little bit that that people don't really understand and and even people who watch this show don't really understand <laughs> so um actually on the on the orville facebook page which i follow Ugh. So it's so one. It's on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> strike strike, strike one. one. I follow it, which means that I'm engaged in social media. That's pretty bad. That's a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> one of the one of the admins of the Orville Facebook page posted a photograph of a person he has a personal beef with. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And said, "What a bad person he was." And that everyone in the Orville group should write to Fox and demand that he be fired. Yeah, great. He did this like two or three days after this episode. Well. (laughs) Which makes me think that there are people out there, including people who are watching the show, who do require this morality play Uh, so i and and i don't disagree with that i think and i don't i'm not going to pretend to have an accurate sense of it i just i can't imagine that it is a significant portion of the society it might be it might be um but it's really hard for me to believe that despite the evidence to the contrary chiefly the person who is in the White House right now, it's actually a little bit for me. <laughs> I mean, because just because literally Tactic Angel, I don't know what to tell you, but he defeated every Republican candidate before getting to <laughs> the I general. Think that you, I'm just saying that you have had got past all of them, all of them. And then we had the general election and it was yeah. Republican voters who fucking put him there. So yeah, I'm just saying I'm just saying I don't know. I certainly don't feel like I have, or I'm not going to pretend at least to have an accurate sense of where most people are um, in the country. And if most do find this, uh, think it's okay, like public shaming, um, cyber bullying when it's, when it's, when it's in favor of people who are on their team, um, you know, I, I, I just feel like most people understand that that stuff is bad, but I could be wrong. So, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like you've had a, a good amount to drink. Yeah. <laughs> uh, once again, I if we're going to have to go into politics, my basic <laughs> response is that Hillary Clinton got got Donald Trump elected. I, I don't think that's the case since she won the popular the people vote. That I, I mean, know. that's what's hard about it. Like, she won the popular vote, so it's hard for me to understand how that argument really works out. She won it by, like, a million fucking people, so it's just hard to see how that works out at the end, that she's somehow responsible for his ability to defeat every fucking Republican candidate throughout the fucking primaries in order to get to... The, like, that's... I just... 
You cannot skip over that part. You cannot skip over the fact that he got that he competed against Republicans first and defeated all of them, a number of whom were legit presidential candidates. You just can't ignore it. And it would be a disservice. It would be unfair and unreasonable to, to do that. His ridiculously populist message that relied on little more than emotional appeals to a country that feels fucking victimized by God knows what, uh, won the day. <laughs> legitimately, legitimately won out. Um, so, you know, I don't, I think to point at Hillary Clinton and say she's the person who got Trump elected is kind of a ridiculous argument. Though I would agree um, that if it was Trump versus Bernie Sanders, I actually do kind of think Bernie Sanders probably would have won. But because they both do little more than emotional appeals to a country that has become kind of absurdly idealistic. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Remind me again what that was related to? <laughs> <laughs> Your ridiculous assertion that like every other Republican, Hillary Clinton is the root of every fucking problem the country has ever had. But <laughs> I don't think that she's the root of every problem that's ever. She, didn't Corey happened. Lewandowski blame the Clinton administration for? Her? <laughs> it's like the Clinton administration. <laughs> it's it's why there's a Russian investigation. You're like, what are you talking about? You mean in the '90s? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Russia. I know it's a bad, it's, 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 it's bad, but I see I'm, this is all in favor of your argument that, that the Oroville is actually irrelevant, that this episode is relevant and, and tackles an issue that needs to be tackled. Um, because most of this shit is on the fucking internet and it's face and it's Facebook type posts and Twitter type posts that have overtaken, uh, the general tenor of political political argument in in the U.S. today, um, and it's a shit show, uh, and you know so <laughs> that's right. It at. is, and even our favorite political candidates aren't immune to it. No, of course. Well, of course not. I mean, they've got to play the fucking game. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I I still wouldn't. And even even Hillary came out like a week or two ago and said that. <laughs> All of the women who didn't vote for her are traitors. Sure. Yeah. Because I, I, because I, I, who, who understand? Like, no, I don't know what gets you elected anymore. Because I don't. That do, does it make sense to you? Does it make sense to you? Because I remember talking to you when Trump was just a fucking primary, and you were very angry <laughs> about about him winning primaries and didn't understand it. And even for a while thought that it was because Democrats were voting for him. Like I am still <laughs> not completely unconvinced of that. So I, there you I go. have met Democrats who voted. For right. Him. Right. And I'm sure that you, a, I'm sure that you have, I've and you met have a lot of Obama turned that into uh, you and you have turned that into, well, that's why <laughs> it's not, uh, it's not, I've, it's not the people on my side of the fence. It's those other ones uh, that have done this. And, <laughs> Well, I don't know about that because I didn't vote for him. Well, neither did I. But I can tell you that I do a lot of thinking on it. I do a lot of thinking, and yeah. I I don't assume that my life experience is is the end all be all there. But no, sometimes it's just it's just I know that it happened. I don't know how much it, of it happened, and I I just. <laughs> I don't think that's actually what we're here to talk about. It's today. not, it's not, it's not, but I, I don't see how you can divorce like be, because, because social media has clearly influenced political debate in America. And, and the Orville isn't this episode of the Orville tackles the effects of social media, uh, on, on a society. It's hard to divorce these two subjects. Cause I think, where though 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 we may disagree certainly on a number of particular political issues and or and or policy issues and the role of the federal government um in your in 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 in, in America's life um i think we both agree <laughs> that the ten, that the that the tone and the tenor and the substance of political debate is worse now uh than it has been 
Jesus oh, Christ, yeah. four years ago. <laughs> it has been. So it's, it's particularly when you look at the like and I think at one point we wanted to play this game where where everybody who thinks something crazy on the right are my people. And everyone yeah. who thinks something crazy on the left are your people. Yes. And it's like <laughs> we have to defend each other. Yeah, we have to defend our people. Yeah. Yes. I don't I don't <laughs> There are so many cases where you where it's it's like we probably neither one of us want to be put in that situation no. because I'm sure I'm sure people you probably don't want to to defend you know Antifa or no. Hillary's sort of crazy comments any more than I want to defend uh, <laughs> all alt-right people who are really more alt-left than anything else but i i don't know i don't i i've looked up they have like strangely weird environmentalist platform nonsense stuff and yeah. you're just like not all of they, them certainly right because it's all like net white nationalism and all that kind of stuff do they really give a fuck about trees like <laughs> uh, they give a fuck about trees they want your health care they want they want all sorts of like really white far... nationalists want i guess maybe just white people health care i guess that's how it would that's how it works yeah <laughs> just the white people get the national get the medicare system everybody's pretty pro medicare I'm, though i'm but... not i'm not fucking joking i have <laughs> i have read up on some of this stuff and it's did you read it it's on because facebook of... but <laughs> uh no actually i went out and i i saw several interviews with these people and i uh tried to look at at some of the things that they theoretically believe tactic angel what does that tell you about the ideological divide between the right and left something that midget radio has been arguing for some time now that it is irrational that it it has absolutely no basis in reality uh and then it's a complete it, it, it completely miss it's completely incapable of defining uh the actual divide between fucking lunatics uh and everybody else but (laughs) well it's and and i have talked about it and i think we have agreed somewhat that like there was there was part of me that wanted as as you probably recall um wanted but him to do well but not well enough to actually get elected rand paul (laughs) yeah because as i said (sighs) he would break up the the unholy alliances in yeah. thought pattern because honestly whether or not you think there should be national health care whether you are pro or anti death penalty whether you want an open economic policy yeah there is <laughs> they're not at all related I like agree. intellectually yeah there's there's almost no connection to them whatsoever. They have, and they have very distinct, pragmatic consequences that are totally separate from one another. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I agree. So, I, I don't know. Like, there's, there's no reason why the conservative party couldn't be like super pro immigration, and actually, yeah. quite a few of them are. Yeah, uh, because it helps drive wages down. <laughs> yeah, and then. At the same time, be like super pro-life and super everything else. Yeah. And there's no reason why, on the other hand, you couldn't have, and we have seen this because you have you have it in Bernie Sanders, a person who wants to basically reject any contact with the outside world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and like Bernie Sanders, uh, like his his uh, views on on foreign policy are not. You know, uh, big picture, no. single paragraph, different than than Rand Paul. No, and yeah, I like, yeah, no, a, a libertarian. Uh, yeah, well, I and I don't mean to do that. I don't want to define it as a school of thought. But yes, Rand Paul, Bernie Sanders, foreign policy, mm. <laughs> half a dozen, one, six of the other, yeah, they're, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, they're both mostly unrealistic and bad, yep. but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And and they it's it's actually strangely America first, and then you have somebody yeah. who says America first, and he's Yeah. Nobody likes him. No, he is an asshole, but yeah. <laughs> he is a prick. But, 
and but not, right. not because of that but <laughs> but yeah we are off topic we we're are just gonna, we're just gonna. we are but 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 to 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 your to support your i think irrational um enjoyment of this show uh this episode of the orville has at least prompted <laughs> plus the whiskey <laughs> uh a discussion of something larger than itself which is what the best star trek does uh, even yeah. though this show, so, even though this fucking show doesn't hold a goddamn finger to what Star Trek really is. The, the Orville, the day, you heard it here, is the incapable Orville's of season achieving one, the heights. Episode seven of Star Trek is as the writing listed staff among clearly the best qualities of Star Trek because to imitate a show and a legacy prompted that is better than this it. Beautiful conversation because it needs an audience. Midget radio and it will and, I and it will get the have. kind of nostalgic children. Who are and mad really about discovery for, and really like the Orville as kind of a trollish. It's, it's a sort uh, so of a this trollish is going to be episode number because... thirty six <laughs> of the Wednesday Night Gentlemen <laughs> Multimedia Empire Official Podcast. <laughs> Please feel free to like if you've enjoyed this video somehow, or subscribe to our channel, or both. Uh, you can find us on Twitter where we are at wng underscore mme underscore opc and. Head on over to our Facebook page where we are simply the Wednesday Night Gentlemen. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And we'll see you again on episode number 37 of this podcast. Bye-bye. Also, down Tech Angel. <laughs> <laughs>